Welcome back to another set of tips and tricks and today I'm going to try to educate and explain a little bit more of how the ASSI DBY cable is used and how it functions with your unit. There's a lot of myths out there and today I'm going to de try to debunk those myths. A lot of people think our Humminbird unit here automatically can switch between the side imaging transducer and the dual beam transducer when we use the Y cable. Most people either use the HDSI transducer which is our high def side scan transducer that is capable of producing 455 or 800 kilohertz side imaging and down imaging readings with our 898, the 998, and the 1198. The smaller transducer which we call the compact side imaging is a single frequency 455 kilohertz only side imaging or down imaging transducer which is capable with the 598, the 798 um, transducers. But what most people don't realize, not only do these transducers have elements that shoot side imaging and down imaging data, they've also in the middle have our 2D sonar data, which is what we need for high speed running so we can get our traditional 2D sonar data. So this transducer, if we look at the pin connections here, have f five pins. Those five pins allow us to get our 200, our 83 kilohertz 2D sonar data, our 455, our temp sensor, and it has a grounding wire in there. That is all built into our regular transducer. So if you're gonna use this transducer on a trolling motor, or an aluminum boat where it's mounted at the bottom of the hole to get all speed readings, you don't have to use this Y cable. But people that have bass boats have a high speed boat that where they're going to mount that transducer up higher on the transom or on the jack plate. If a transducer's out of the water running, it can't shoot through air. So what we have to do, we have to use a, a special cable called a Y cable. This one in particular is the ASSI DBY cable. If you look at this end, we still have the same amount of ports, but on these ends, if the inserts you look inside, this is the early version of the ASSI DBY cable. The new one has a new shielded connector when you connect them that actually the this is the end, male end goes inside of a female end and has this same connection in there. It's going to look a little different. This is one I had handy. What a lot of people get confused is a Y cable that comes with the unit in the package. This will have COM on one side, it'll have ACC YCOM on one side, and NMEA COM on the other side. This cable is for GPS splitting the COM port in the back of the unit, which is typically more of a rectangular shape than the I call it the old Monopoly house shape. It's a square shape with the, with the edges clipped. This cable will not do your transducer data. It's for splitting the GPS and an accessory like WeatherSense, Interlink. That is why that is in with your unit. So forget about that one. It's not going to work. You'll have to buy this accessory cable. Um, this will plug directly into the back of the unit. And if we go over here to our unit and turn it 1190, on 1198, you will, this cable will fit directly into the bottom right port of 1198. And what it's going to do is it's going to split, separate those wires in here. And the easiest way to explain is think of a trailer connector. Our trailer connector, I don't have a wire out so this will be an easy representation. A trailer connector has five wires for the multiple lights. And if we think about it, we've got three wires, we're going to call it the blue and the green, and this yellow wire here. The, the blue wire would be our temp probe. We're going to just say our green wire is for the side imaging left side, and we're going to say the yellow wire is for our side imaging on our right hand side. Then we have our 200 and our 83 kilohertz. We're going to represent them by the brown wire and the white wire. So all that 
normally you would plug all that into the unit and the, this transducer would have all five of those wires hooking directly into the, the unit. But what the Y cable does is take those wires, splits these three off for our side imaging, down imaging, and our temp probe to this transducer. We have these two wires that normally powered our 2D transducer, which if we get a regular dual beam transducer, those would wire into here. So I hope that helps you understand we're just separating wires, not doing anything magical in our units. I'm going to break down and I'll show you this picture here. We'll zoom in and I'll explain exactly how it's breaking down. If you look at this picture here, this is our Y cable, our Y connector, our one end that goes to the side imaging transducer, and the other end that goes to the dual beam transducer. Here is our side imaging transducer. Here is our dual beam transducer. If we look real close, we've got all five wires coming out of the main connector, just like the side imaging transducer has all five wires. But the thing, if we notice our wires, we have our black, our green, and our pink in our representation here, only going to the side imaging side. And we've only got the four pins here, and if we notice, we have five pins in the side imaging transducer. So we're not sending that 2D sonar beam to produce in the side imaging transducer. What we're doing with the Y cable is we're splitting that out, and in our representation, we're showing a yellow and a blue wire here for representational purposes. That is coming down, and if you'll see on our side imaging dual beam side, we've only got two pins to match the two pins in the dual beam transducer. So we're getting our 2D readings all the time from our 2D transducer, our side imaging and down imaging data, only, and temperature only from the side imaging transducer. You can see here our color representation. We're showing the temperature sensor is our black line. Our green line is our right side imaging. The pink is showing the left side imaging. The 83 kilohertz is the blue, and the yellow is representing our 200 kilohertz. So by using this, there is no magic to it. It is just splitting the data out of the side imaging transducer to allow us to get 2D sonar from an additional transducer. The unit thinks it's all as one. Okay, now that you better understand exactly the wiring, if you look at these, these wires, you're going to have one that says side imaging right there. And you're going to have one that says dual beam on it. Dual beam. If you look at the dual beam, you'll only see two gold female ports in there. The side imaging, we're going to have four gold ports in there in kind of a, in kind of a T-shaped pattern. That is an easy way to tell which transducer. If I plug this cable, the side imaging side, into the side imaging transducer, and this side into the dual beam transducer, what is going to, and I plug this into the unit, the unit's going to see, going to process and transmit the 2D data from this transducer because those wires are powered here. And typically that's the narrower cable. The wider cable, it's going to power the left side and the right side of the side imaging transducer. It's not going to power our 2D sonar data, our crystals that are built into this unit, but it's also going to get our temp reading from this. This is going to be an external temp reading in the water, so you will get temp and side imaging and down imaging from that side, 2D sonar data from this. What this allows us to do is to mount this transducer high like on the jack plate like I've done on this Skeeter FX and it allows me to mount a dual beam 2D transducer. Even though this one has a temp probe, the temp is not going to be red. It's going to be red from my side imaging transducer. 
We can epoxy this in the hole. We can mount it down lower so we can get high speed readings if we're on a like a deep V aluminum boat where we can't shoot through the fiberglass, single layer fiberglass material like a bass boat is. A bass boat has an excellent hull opportunity because we can shoot through the fiberglass that's in the, that's in the hull with a 2D transducer and get readings on, on plane. Uh, the best thing to do is test your location before you epoxy these down. Uh, it doesn't matter. Fiberglass can delaminate. It can have air bubbles. It, the, the fiberglass, the best thing to do is to put a couple inches of water in there, disable your bilge pump, just your automatic portion, just for a little bit, so you can put a couple inches of water in the hole. Put the water in the hole, take you a little Ziploc bag, fill it up with sand, and put that transducer in there and move it around until you find the best readings. That will help you get your readings on plane at the highest speed. Now some boat holes like this boat, when it really lifts at the end, uh, it could be impossible to maintain sonar readings at all speed levels or all water conditions. It gets really windy and wavy. This boat, I've got it pretty good, except when it's, when it's really windy and wavy and there's a lot of air turbulence coming through the water and sonar can't shoot through air. That's what radar does. It, radar shoots through air, sonar shoots through water. So you have to have good water flow across this that doesn't have air bubbles, even if you're gonna mount externally on your boat. And that's why you need to have it at the lowest port possible point in the boat, just where the hole is, is running good clean water across the face of that transducer so it can send and receive those sonar signals. One thing on troubleshooting, if for example, you would miss, miss connect these, put the dual beam to the side imaging transducer and the side imaging to this dual beam transducer. You would still get 2D sonar ratings off plane, but you would not get any side imaging or down imaging readings because this transducer is not capable of producing those side imaging, down imaging readings. So if you install it, for some reason you get the cables mixed up, the tags are, are, are wrong, that is an easy way to check if you have it, have it mixed up. The easiest way is to look and see which ones have the female pins in them to just double check before you install. Two pins that are basically vertically up and down go to your dual beam transducer because it's got two pins. If it's the XP920, which is a shoot through, the trans, shoot through transducer that's round like the picture, it comes with an epoxy pack. If, you, if that's not available, you can use the XP920T, which has a Temp Pro pigtail sensor that goes over the back of the boat. This one we can see that the, pig, that the Temp probe is in the bottom. You hook the dual beam up to that, hook the side imaging to that, hook it to our unit. Depending on the unit that you're using, if you're using this 898, 998, 1198, set it to this high-def side-scan transducer. On a 598, 798, 797, the smaller units that use the compact side imaging transducer, they're only capable of producing one frequency you want to set it if you're using the CSI transducer or the HDSI to compact side imaging and that'll work for you. I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about how simple and easy this ASSI DBY cable is. That's Advanced System Side Imaging SI Dual Beam for DB and Y for the Y cable. Part number simple to remember. I hope that helps you out and understands a little bit more about the, the side imaging transducer and how the Y cable works and makes it easier for you to do the install or buy the right components the first time. Visit your local Humminbird dealer and pick one of these units up and get out there and find what you've been missing. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and tune in as we go more in depth about my sponsor's products and the products I use on the water to help you, help you get more out of your investment and enjoy your time on the water. Thank you and tune in next time.